I'm Gwyneth Paltrow, and you're listening to the Goop Podcast, made possible by our friends at Bolthouse Farms. There's an ongoing movement toward living a more plant-based lifestyle, something we'll be talking about at our wellness summit in Goop Health. As part of this, we're always looking for great dairy alternatives, which is why we love the non-dairy Bolthouse Farms plant protein milk made with pea protein. Not only is it a delicious alternative to traditional dairy, it has 10 grams of protein per serving, which can give it a leg up on other alternative milks, like almond milk, which has one gram of protein per serving. For more information on Bolthouse Farms plant protein milk and for store locations, visit bolthouse.com. Hi guys, I'm Gwyneth Paltrow. Every Thursday, Goop editors will be sitting down with provocative thinkers, industry disruptors, and culture changers. I'll take turns interviewing barrier-breaking guests as we talk about shifting old paradigms and starting new conversations. Today's guest, Dr. Alejandro Younger, is a very good friend and mentor who has seen me through a number of health roadblocks. He's opened up my world to the limitless possibilities that exist for healing. Alejandro is the founder of the Clean Program, which I highly recommend to anyone who wants to experiment with cleaning up their diet. He's also the author of a number of New York Times bestselling books, including Clean. The body has the ability to heal itself. What we need to do is discover what is blocking these uh, processes to happen and what is lacking Alejandro sat down with our chief content officer, Elise Lunin, to talk about the importance of staying curious and open-minded, which is one of my favorite things about both of them. They also discuss why detox as a concept is so hotly debated. The way we should eat is the way that nature designed us to eat. The problem is we really don't know what that is because we have left no culture on the planet that is not polluted by modern fake food. After the conversation, I'll be doing a quick round of Ask Me Anything. If you've got a burning or totally random question you want me to answer, hit us up at Goop on Instagram or Facebook. Before we get to Alejandro, let's talk about one of our partners. We're not shy about our passion for good TV here at Goop, so the office has been chattering about HBO's new show, Succession. Set in the boardrooms and penthouse apartments of New York City and beyond, Succession explores power, politics, money, and family in the cutthroat corporate world. The new drama follows the saga of the Roy family, owners of one of the biggest media companies in the world. When family patriarch Logan decides he isn't ready to hand over the reins just yet, his adult children take matters into their own hands. From Adam McKay, director of The Big Short, and In the Loop writer Jesse Armstrong, Succession airs Sunday nights at 10 p.m. And you can watch right now on streaming or on-demand platforms, only on HBO. Now, let's get to Elise and her interview with Dr. Alejandro Younger. I love sort of the creation of you as a doctor who's focused on detox because you originally were trained as a cardiologist. So can you sort of take us back to that that moment when you changed course? Yeah, and it's not like I focused on detox alone. Detox is one of the powerful tools that I use and that I happen to understand. I went to medical school in Uruguay and when I graduated, I decided to go and study for my um, specialty and subspecialty where the books that I was studying in Uruguay from were being written and that was in New York. So I went to New York, I did my internship and residency at NYU Downtown Hospital, and my fellowship in cardiology at Lenox Hill Hospital. And the pace of life in New York as a doctor in training is insane. Now the laws changed, but at the time, you used to be on call for three days in a row, and barely getting any sleep and running around. And there was no time for eating, and there was no time for eating healthy. So, you know, I used to eat from the hospital cafeteria, which is slow suicide, <laughs> or, or at night, on my own call nights, 
I used to uh, get from vending machines. And if I had a few minutes or an hour, I would go to the supermarket and and um, and we didn't have that those kind of supermarket in Uruguay at the, at the time. So I was like a Aboriginal in a, in a, in a, you know in a, in a modern store looking at these things, boxes and cans and jars and you can put something in a in a microwave oven and have a cooked meal in in a, in a minute I, I was amazed <laughs> so i was eating all this crap right and i started getting sick and sicker and sicker and i started gaining weight and i started having difficulty digesting and i started having severe allergies and then i started getting depressed and that's when i really worried because if you looked at my life from outside there was nothing to be depressed about but i was waking up in the morning dreading going to work and having this sense of doom and and so i took a day off and i made appointments with the best of my colleagues the best psychiatrist the best gastroenterologist the best uh, allergist and i had a whole day of 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 uh, appointments and by the end of the day, I had three diagnoses and seven prescription medications. And I had this double aha moment. One of them was, I'm not going to take seven pills three times a day in order to function. And the other, the other thing was, this is how I'm treating my patients. So I decided to make a radical change, look for a different solution for my own health issues. And um, and I started, you know, reading books and consulting people. And I ended up uh, learning meditation and going to an ashram in India and living there for some time and then coming back and moving to Palm Springs, started working in four hospitals. And in the ashram, I was eating vegetarian food uh, made with love. So my symptoms really got better. But as soon as I came back, to life in the hospitals in Palm Springs, which I, is where I became good friends with Stephen Gundry, um, I, uh, I started suffering from my symptoms again. And at that time, and I describe this in my book, in my first book, Clean, a friend of mine that had just finished a detox program came to my house. And when I saw him, after seeing him 10 days before, I was just blown away. I couldn't believe that somebody could have that kind of transformation in 10 days. And it couldn't even be plastic surgery because I saw him 10 days ago. He, you know, it, it, there was no time for the scars to, to heal. So he told me about this place, We Care Spa in Palm Springs, where immediately I went, became friends with the owner, and... And um, he, she's from Argentina, so we speak Spanish. And and after 10 days of starting her program, and I, and, and I wasn't even doing it 100% right because I was working, um, all my symptoms went away. And people were blown away about, uh, uh, about the way I looked and the way I felt was incredible. So all my friends, my family, my, my, and then my patients started asking me, I want to do what you did. So uh, I started studying what happened to me at We Care, and through functional medicine, I was able to really understand, and then started to try to improve it according to my understanding and my my new my new discoveries of of uh, of you know the science behind it. Mainly through functional medicine was that I that I, I was able to improve these programs and adapt them. Uh, the We Care program is a program that you do in a retreat setting. Then I tried to recreate that kind of program in a, in a, in a city setting where people are living busy lives, and it didn't really work. That's, that's why juice fasting alone is not for everybody and, 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 and not for life in the city for sure. So... so through that process of trying to recreate in the city what I had experienced and guided people through in, in a retreat kind of setting, that's how I came to what the CLEAN program is today. I have done the CLEAN program. I actually, I don't know if you remember the first time we met, I sat on the 
couch in my, in in my office. office. Yeah. And we talked for, and I, I was know, barefoot, <laughs> of course, <laughs> for several hours. And that's when I said, you know, Dr. Younger, I don't feel good. It was after my first child and you put me, I did actually did clean program sort of modified, but for five weeks, the clean program really for three. And I was astounded. I think it's one of those health transformations that if you've never tried anything like that, it's an incredible gateway drug because you you start to understand what it would look and feel like if you ate in a really virtuous and supported way. And then obviously it allows you to eliminate, which I know eliminate problematic foods and reintroduce them and see if they're actually in fact problematic, which is really important. I know you don't always subscribe to, to like the LCAP blood tests and whatnot. Like you, you believe elimination is essential. Essential. Yes. The goal. And it's so simple, you know? Yeah. yeah. The, 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 the not so simple thing is finding out what is it that each one of us has to eliminate, right? Mm -hmm. Because there are different elimination diets around, right? Um, but not not everyone applies to everyone. So so the clean program has a great ending in the way that okay now now you felt the results now you feel incredible and you're not left with just that mm -hmm. you know you 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 have a, a whole phase of reintroducing foods and really getting to understand what your blueprint is. Yeah. The other thing that I think is a nice myth that you bust in that program is this concept that somehow detox or, or trying to establish a new paradigm of what it feels to be healthy requires starvation or juice fasting or, you know, I find the, the clean program is, it gets a little boring by the end, but it is incredibly easy and nourishing and you're not hungry and you can snack and it's not built on a foundation of deprivation. It's just like, wow, I really am eating well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just and miss then, the alcohol, but, if I can be honest. Yeah. And that's the boring <laughs> part that you're talking about. <laughs> not being able to really go out and eat a cheese plate. Well, the good thing is that, that the, the clean program is 21 days Yeah, and it's not for the rest of your life. Um, <laughs> And then you reintroduce stuff. And if alcohol, you know, is is good for you, because it is good for a lot of people, then by all means. Yeah. I do think it's the diet and the thing that's easiest control. When you see how profound it impacts your health, too, I think that for a lot of people, that's the beginning of change, where they realize they actually have a lot of autonomy over how they feel. And then they're also reminded, because I think, in modern day life, you, you start to accept how you feel as status quo. And then you have this moment, or at least I did after clean, where I was like, oh my God, I feel like myself again. It's profound sense of homecoming. Yeah. It's, it's almost spiritual. Yeah, no, no it's not almost. It's yeah. definitely a spiritual. Um, the, the, the comments that I get from all over the world, the majority have a hugely spiritual aspect to it, you know. And, Depression is gone. I, I'm, I'm dreaming again. I'm getting better, uh, along better with my husband or with my kids. Or, I mean, it definitely has a an, a huge impact. Mm -hmm. Plus the ability to heal yourself, which I think is a really incredible lesson. And so, and the other thing that's nice about it is that it's prescribed in the sense that you're given pretty clear idea of like what you can and cannot eat. It makes it simpler for a lot of people. Let's talk about diets. So. Obviously, there's sort of warring worlds of diets right now, paleo and vegans and ketogenic diet. Like, how should we eat? No, that's, a, that's a difficult question, and there's so many books about, about that subject, right? The way we should eat, and this is a theory, right, is the way that nature designed us to eat. So... The problem is we really don't know what that is mm. because we have left no culture on the planet that is not polluted by modern mm. inventions or, you know, foods or fake foods or, or whatever it is, right? So, so it is very difficult to understand that. Now, there's many ways in which we can approximate ourselves to eating the way that nature designed us to eat 
and and because we are in a way fresh into this understanding we are kids in a sense in this understanding we have to do um the process that starts with knowing what not to do your kids you don't tell them what to do you tell them what not to do don't put your fingers in the in the socket or <laughs> don't hit your sister or don't jump out the balcony it's a lot of no don't do this don't do that right and and once they learn what they what can harm them then you can start teaching them things to do in a way with our understanding of eating it's kind of like the same thing we're in a kid state so we have to learn what not to do right don't put your fingers in the socket don't eat gluten if you have a gluten allergy or so so what's the best way to really understand that is doing something like the clean program in which you eliminate the the group of of foods and other things that are ed- edible that affect a lot of people and then you reintroduce slowly one by one to see if they affect you or not mm-hmm. and i find that so so powerful right so that is the most important aspect of this question that you asked me so how, how should we eat well i don't know that but uh, what i know is how we should not eat right and then of course you know different things are 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 good in different ways for different reasons for example there's a huge movement now or re-emerging movement of intermittent fasting and when i say there's a huge movement what i mean is that that um a lot of more people are becoming aware of it because some doctors are talking about it right but fasting and intermittent fasting has been has been in 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 different cultures for thousands and thousands of years and all the religions right? there's also another big movement which is relating to the, the keto movement which is relating to the way in which the body utilizes energy and and making um less energy available in the form of sugar so that the body has to go into a uh an adaptive mode or a survival m- mode in which it breaks fat and forms ketone bodies right but if you look at the evolution of man you could see how thousands of years ago or even hundreds of years ago uh, humans living in the way that we were living na- there much more according to nature's design or even fully in nature's design we would be entering into a ketogenic state through an intermittent fasting uh, forced activity right why because there were no fridges there were no cans and boxes there was no there was no way of of uh, obtaining food in supermarkets and delis 24/7 so human beings would be running around the planet looking for food mm-hmm. finding it having a feast then then looking for food again like most of the animals still do on the planet and they don't get sick mm-hmm. right so we we would have imposed episodes of feasting and fasting now our genes have evolved for thousands and thousands of years like that and it's only recently in terms of evolutionary time that we started eating all day long right So so whatever you do that puts your physiology more like it was thousands of years ago in which your genes are still lingering right that's going to be beneficial for your for your health and that is how intermittent fasting can be thought of and even ketogenesis ketogenesis because the ketone movement and all the benefits that come from creating ketone bodies in your in in your, in your organism it is something that we look at that as something that we can do certain things to achieve but thousands of years ago that's what life put you into you know so everybody was walking around in a sort of ketone state right right yeah and the idea of like the ketogenic diet being incredibly intensively based on meat is also i think 
not that palatable for a lot of people now. So it's, that makes sense. So you can achieve, you can sort of achieve the same thing through not eating for 14 or 16 hours. Well, a good friend of mine, Will Cole, who's a friend of yours now, um, I just wrote a book, The Ketotarian Diet. So how to become a, a, a vegetarian in ketosis. That's super interesting. Yes. We'll have more of Elise's conversation with Dr. Alejandro Younger in a minute. In the meantime, let's talk about one of our partners. As we learn more and more about the benefits of a plant-based lifestyle, an increasing number of us are looking for substitutes that offer nutrition benefits and taste good. So we were thrilled to learn about the refrigerated, non-dairy, Bolthouse Farms plant protein milk made with pea protein. Not only is it a delicious and creamy alternative to traditional dairy, it has more protein than other options like almond milk, which can give it a leg up. I use this in my morning coffee. My son Max likes it in his cereal and smoothies or just to drink at night, and you can even bake with it. So here are some hard facts. Besides having 10 grams of pea protein per eight ounce serving, Bolthouse Farms plant protein milk contains 50% more calcium than dairy milk and is fortified with B12, a nutrient that vegans and vegetarians are often looking to consume more of. We've used Bolthouse Farms plant protein milk in a particularly good blueberry chia bowl here at Goop, and we'll be sharing the recipe soon on the site. In the meantime, for more information on Bolthouse Farms plant protein milk and for store locations, visit bolthouse.com. Okay, let's get back to our chat with Alejandro. Twenty-one days is a long time to, even though I guess in the spectrum of things it's not, but for some people that feels inaccessible. Like, what are easy ways for people to start easing into something that is, resembles a detox? So, so what I realized is that if you give people an experience in their own flesh, you don't you don't need to explain too much because that's the best explanation, to have the experience of feeling great, vibrant, healthy, right? 21 days is the time that you need in order to have certain profound changes. For example, habits don't break before that time, right? But what I've been really scratching my head from the beginning of, of the, this journey of mine was how do I give people a powerful experience in the least period of time possible so that you can hook them into wanting to be healthy, right? Mm -hmm. And then, then when, when somebody really feels um, there's nothing that tastes as good as feeling good feels, right? Mm -hmm. So when you have that feeling, you don't want to go back. Yeah, people do go back, but it takes a longer time to go back than what it takes to achieve that that state that you can give somebody. And and in looking into that, I've developed a one week program that even though it doesn't take you to the level that you would be in a twenty one day program, certain aspects of it do. And, and people get really excited and, and hooked to try to continue for longer so, or, or to jump into a healthier lifestyle after that, right? And that I achieve exactly by combining the, these, these practices and concepts of the detoxification world with intermittent fasting and ketogenesis. That makes sense. So, detox and by the way, paleo is another big movement, right? That if you look at it physiologically, also puts people in in ketosis in a way. Yeah. So one of the things, as you are well, you well know, you know, the idea of detox just makes some people apoplectic, right? This idea that our bodies cannot do it all themselves. Um, obviously, we we can, we can do a fair amount. We can do it. This is, this is what people don't understand. We can do it all themselves, or all ourselves. Our bodies are designed and have everything they need to do it on, on itself if the user manual is followed. Like, for example, when you buy a toy and it says batteries included, right? 
you get the manual, you put it, and you learn how to, uh, uh, right? Now, if you gr grab this toy and you put it underwater, it's, it's, it's not going to work. We, are, we, as machines, are put in a completely different environment outside and inside ourselves than where it was designed. So because of that, because of our modern life, our unnatural life, is that our bodies cannot do what they need to do, that they would be able to do if they lived in a natural environment. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So yes, our bodies can do everything, but, but not in the way that we're living today. And that's, I think, takes away a lot of that confusion. Yeah. Right? I know. It's interesting how polarizing the idea of detox even is. And it's, it's, again, as you mentioned, it's like eating the right, it's setting your body up for success, right? Right. Eliminating things that are known to be carcinogenic from your personal care routine. It's not, this is not, the detoxification is not a, a modern concept that, uh, the, you know, that, that, that it's a fad now. It's what your body is doing as we're sitting here and talking Otherwise, you would die. For example, you, I see you breathing out. You breathe in, oxygen goes into your blood, it's taken by the cell, it's burned with sugar into uh, water and CO2, which is re-released in your blood, the CO2. The, in the blood, CO2, which is a gas, is, is carbon dioxide, is dissolved in, gra in, in, in your blood as, as carbonic acid, right? So it acidifies your blood. Then it circulates. When it passes through the lung, it kind of fizzes and bubbles, like like you see bubbles forming from a from a kind of soda. These bubbles go into the alveoli and then are are eliminated as CO2. That's detoxification, mm -hmm. right? This is one of the processes of detoxification that is fundamental for life. I mean, all of them are fundamental for life. But this one will kill you faster than than anyone mm -hmm. right? in, in minutes if, if you don't take away that CO2. That's the detoxification. Now, you can learn how to make that process better. If you, for example, take deep breaths, mm -hmm. you're making that process better, right? Now, oh, no, no, the deep breaths are ridiculous. That's, that's comparing what people say detoxification is ridiculous. It's like somebody saying, oh, deep, deep breathing is ridiculous. Detoxification really is just doing things that support what your body is already trying to do. For example, if, if, if magnesium is not there and is needed for certain things, you have to provide it, whether it's through your diet or through, or through a supplementation. Once you provide the magnesium, the, the processes that depend on magnesium are going to be able to be fulfilled. Otherwise, they're not. And if they're not, something else happens. Because the body is always trying to adapt and survive. Mm -hmm. So, are there certain things that you observe in your patients that are unilaterally like that we are deprived in? Like, is magnesium something that we all lack, or B twelve for women? Are there certain things that you feel like people should the, absolutely check? The um, the uh, epidemics of of a lacking things are the lacking of magnesium, the lacking of vitamin D, the lack of B vitamins for a lot of people, yeah, minerals. So, the, so th those are the, the, the big ones that if you just take them without even checking, you're probably better off. Right. right? But yeah, definitely everybody should check for those things. Yeah. And again, I know people feel like we should get everything from food, which is obviously ideal but definitely a struggle for most people who don't always eat impeccably and who are eating food that is not impeccably sourced. And there is no such, right? Yeah. Because because even even the food that uh, that is organic and biodynamic and 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 it has to be transported from here to there. Maybe it's picked up a little earlier than it should when it's ripe. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it will rot in the in the truck, right? Mm -hmm. So, and fruit really gets the full nutrient value on ripening, right? Yeah. So, so there is no perfect world in our modern cities today in which you can eat perfectly and not need anything, mm -hmm. right? 
So here at Goop, you're sort of the quarterback. When we are asked a question from a reader and we don't know where to turn, like you're always sending us really interesting researchers, doctors, PhDs, um, healing, alternative healing practices from the ancient world that maybe can be applied. Is there anything, just to put you on the spot, but like is there anything out there that you're really interested in? So, so you know well that I'm a kind of like an explorer. Yes. And and um, and I'm interested in general, but not just for for advancing the science. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm interested in, in for myself and 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 and, uh, and I and I know that many of the things that I'm interested in are not backed up by science yet. Right. So so. Um, one of the very interesting things that I've tried, and I think we've talked about this before, but but um, is cambo, mm. which is the venom from the skin of a frog that is applied to little burns in your in your own skin, right? And the and the frogs are not harmed in the in the harvesting of the venom, which is something that I hear from people uh, that get worried. Um, this is a very, very powerful thing to do just as a as a as an experience, right? It makes you sweat and vomit and and and, and bowel movements and, and uh, sounds fun. It's not fun <laughs> at all. It's not fun at all. But what really attracted me to the, to trying it is when I read that there was a shaman in the Amazon that used to, you know, heal with ayahuasca and all kinds of herbs and 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 in his in his tribe there was there was a, a like a burst of disease but also depression and and you know things were not working fine and he wasn't able to help with ayahuasca and all his other methods, right? And one day deep in an ayahuasca meditative state, he was guided by by his guiding spirits to the the jungle where he found the frog and that's how he started using it. And that that um that this venom does something to your karmic body and helps release bad luck and and uh, and and things like that, but also toxins, and and uh, you definitely have a physical experience of expelling lots of things, right? But but it goes beyond that. And, and I tried it, and I, and it was a really profound and I think beneficial experience. Interesting. I mean, I love that you you will try things. I mean, we've talked about iboga and ibogaine and how incredibly transformative it can be for people who are in the midst of an opioid addiction. That's a shrub and gabon that they've distilled into, um, it's ayahuasca-esque, but different, and it blocks the addiction receptors. Well, ayahuasca ayahuasca is talked by plant medicine men as as the grandmother of, of plants and 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 ibogaine is the grandfather. You know, it's mm. different different kind of of teachings, right? And different, completely different experiences. Mm-hmm. But can have a profound impact. Um, so I love that you are not your you go beyond because clearly, you know, there are a lot of sick people. We certainly don't know everything. We don't have that many tools. It often feels like for the things that are chronic and pernicious, but knowing that we're still looking, I think is half the battle. Yeah. And, and, um, and all these methods that have been scientifically proven or have not been even scientifically studied yet. Um, there is no time f- to do all the studies that need to be done. Right. Yeah. I, I hope they are done, but so, so one has to sometimes guide himself or herself through your intuition and through learning what other people are doing, what other other cultures are doing, mm-hmm. and taking advantage of 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 everything that isn't dangerous, right? 
or, 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 or even if it is dangerous, because chemotherapy is dangerous. Right. Surgery is dangerous. So, so um, even if it's dangerous, I, I sometimes mm-hmm. try. Yeah, there's a risk reward to everything. And I think that that's what you mentioned is really important too. Sort of the absence of evidence doesn't mean the evidence of absence. And some of these things, like ibogaine, for example, is never probably going to be the world's most profitable invention for a pharma company. It's not necessarily, there's a researcher in Miami who is looking for funding because it's so, what she's observed is so powerful, but she cannot raise the money to make this a mainstream. She was on TV, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, I saw her. Yeah, she's at the University of Miami. And yes. So it, it is important, I think, that we heal ourselves as much as possible. The body has the ability to heal itself. What we need to do is discover what is blocking these uh, processes to happen and what is lacking. And when you remove whatever is blocking these things or you add whatever is lacking, everything falls into place and the body gains, recovers Mm -hmm. its ability to heal itself. It's just getting out of our own way. Yeah. Yeah, simple as that. Thank you, Dr. Younger. My pleasure. Thanks so much for joining our interview with Dr. Alejandro Younger. I'm so grateful that he continues to push the wellness conversation forward. You can learn more about his detox protocol at cleanprogram.com and more about his work at goop.com slash the podcast. Now it's AMA time. Denisa is asking... If I hear Yanni or Laurel and I beyond hear Yanni and I'm sort of freaking because Kiki, one of our editors, is in here and she hears Laurel and we are both of our minds are melting. Have a question? Drop us a line at Goop on Instagram or Facebook. Thank you for listening to the Goop podcast. We're really excited about it over at Goop HQ, and we want to be sure that we're giving you exactly what you want. We'd love it if you would take two minutes to tell us a bit about you, along with what we can do to make the show even better. Just go to listenerq, L-I-S-T-E-N-E-R-Q dot com forward slash Goop to complete the short survey. Listenerq dot com slash Goop. That's listenerq dot com slash Goop.